Hey friends, and welcome back to our book club, Love and Responsibility, as we delve into the teachings of Pope St. John Paul II on marriage, family, relationships, using Dr. Edward Street's book, Men, Women, and the Mystery of Love. So, hey guys, Encore, we got a couple more chapters here. I thought last week was the last week. Forgive me, I was wrong, but this is awesome because we get to continue studying together these great teachings. It's great patrimony of Pope St. John Paul II about marriage, family, relationships. And I hope your discussions last week about theology of the body were very fruitful and got you excited about a possibility for you in the future to really delve into and study these things as a group or just individually, what have you. But this week is chapter 13, and it's entitled Single Training for Marriage Right Now. So what I love about this chapter is it begins by just pointing out this very important truth. You know, the person we want to be, you know, the man I want to be in the future, right? I have this image of this, yeah. All right, that person begins right now. That man begins right now. That woman begins right now. The choices I make right now are forming me, right? We can't divorce what is going on right now in the present moment from what is to come in the future. I mean, God's grace, obviously, can work miracles, etc. But generally speaking, the things I hear, the things I see, the things I choose to do, the people I spend my time with, all these things are forming us, our character, into the person, the man, woman, we are becoming. And so this is important. It's no different with marriage. You know, everything that I'm doing right now, put yourself in that you know place, right? Everything I'm doing right now is preparing me for marriage. So this this chapter is really about those of you who are single, maybe you're engaged, basically those who are not yet married. And it's really trying to hammer this point, you know, what I'm doing now is is going to form me into the future spouse that I'm going to become. So he uses this great example, you know, professional soccer player comes to teach his, his kids how to play soccer. He shows up to practice and he's like, hey, all right, kids, you know, no bumming around at practice, right? If you pla practice poorly, you're going to play poorly once the game time comes. You know, none of this, you know, just have a good time at practice and it's just easy going and then I'm going to be great at game time. It's like, no, the way you practice is going to determine how you play in the game. So, hey, let's work hard. If we make mistakes, all right, we correct them, we work on it, but we got to show up to play, whether it's practice or not, because only then are we really going to be ready for the game. So, guys, everything you're doing right now as a single man or as a single woman, it's forming you into the type of spouse you're going to be once you're married. And so Dr. Shree in this chapter gives us four tips for making the most of single life. That is how we can prepare now well for marriage. The first tip is become a man or a woman for others. This is great. We live in a culture that entices us in many, many ways to be very selfish. You've heard of like the bachelor attitude, right? This whole idea that, well, my time is mine and I just kind of do what I want when I want to do it. I'm not sure how I'm feeling today. No schedule, no plan. You know, we just, it's, it's all about me. It's all about me. And we can easily fall into this attitude instead of an attitude that is for others. Others. Why does this matter as a single man or woman as to what, whether or not I'm living for others? Because marriage is going to pull you out of yourself whether you like it or not. And those who deal successfully with this transition are those who are already accustomed to being selfless, not selfish, selfless. And those who do not do well in this transition when they enter into marriage are those who just live for themselves all the time. Your wife and your kids, your husband, your kids, they're going to need you. They're going to need you to, to put aside your preferences or every little thing you want to do and serve them. And they have a right to that as, as your spouse, as your family. And so we got to think about that. How about me? How do I use my time right now? So he gives us some uh, specific uh, questions we could ask. You know, um, When you say you're going to do something, do you follow through on it? or not. So someone invites you, he uses this again multiple, time, multiple times in the book. So someone invites you to do something on Friday night. <gasps> they text you on Sunday. Okay, a week in advance, right? And you're kind of like, well, man, maybe, yeah, I'll be there. But then Thursday, you get a better op, you know, a, another opportunity that sounds more fun, more, oh, sorry, I can't come on Friday. I got something came up, impossible, right? Where you're not very dependable. You're kind of flaky, kind of jumping around here and that, right? That's not building character and virtue for marriage. Your wife, your husband is going to need you to be dependable. Say what you mean, mean what you say, right? Our Lord would say, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. 
He says, anticipate how to serve others. You know, so often we show up even at like a party or we're just, we go visit our parents or I don't know, we're with our friends and it's just about, okay, how can I have fun in this situation? How can I have a good time? How am I doing? It's like, no, you show up to these things. It's like, all right, how can I serve? What can I do? How can I make this better? How, how can I, you know, help out? It's, it's just an attitude shift and it follows through with action. So that, that's a great way to start training yourself to serve the needs proactively of those around you. Obviously, your wife, your kids, your husband, your kids are going to need this from you once you're marriage, married. And the third little uh, invitation is also learn how to address conflict in a healthy way. A lot of single people, something comes up, conflict, etc. They just kind of fade away. They just kind of run away from whatever problem. They don't really deal with their problems. In marriage, problems are going to come up. You can either run away from them or you can humbly enter into them, address them through conversation and, and healthy conflict resolution. So as a single person, let's let's do that. Let's do that now because you're definitely going to need it once you're married. So that that's kind of the first uh, tip. Become a man or woman for others. The second tip is look for character, not charm. So one of the big thrusts of the book is, you know, love is about so much more than how cute or attractive someone is. It's about so much more than how much fun or entertaining someone is, right? Looks and charm only go so far. Real love goes much deeper. It goes to the person. It goes to the heart of the matter. So when you are, you know, maybe dating or as a single person kind of looking around and, and, and seeing who you might want to enter into a relationship with, I mean, you got to look let's get a little bit deeper. Let's get a little bit more profound. Stop living on the surface, being so superficial, etc. You know, this is, uh, you know, healthy marriages are not built upon great looks and charm. Healthy, solid, great marriages are built upon character. They're built upon virtue. They're built upon true love, which seeks the good of the other. That's the kind of person you want to keep your eye out for, <laughs> right? Stop messing around with bozos. Gosh, I could go on for hours. <laughs> yeah, come on. Okay. So some things to notice about those around you. How does your beloved, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your fiance even, treat family and friends? Because it's going to be a good indicator of how he's going to treat you, how she's going to treat you once you're married. Is he respectful? Is, is she disrespectful? Is she kind? Is she loving? Is she affectionate? Is he what? You know, it matters how they treat those closest to them. Because once you become close to him or her, you know, that's... <laughs> It's what you should expect. Second one is, is he or she kind in honoring parents or siblings? Third, does your beloved put the needs of others before his own? Very important question. Does your beloved have the capacity to sacrifice for the good of those around him or her? I've heard people comment, um, you know, this is this would be a Catholic uh, therapist who's speaking to anyone, though, not just Catholics. You know, successful marriages, the most important characteristic is this one. Can my spouse sacrifice for, uh, put his or her preferences aside for those of the, the beloved, the spouse. Uh, if he or she can do that, that's great. You got a good, you got a good one. If not, run for the hills, folks. Would you describe him as self-centered or selfless? What are your beloved's relational habits like? Generosity, humility, self-control, selfishness, pride, indulgence. You got to, you got to sit down and put on paper. What are the virtues of my future spouse? Is she Kind. Is she selfish? Is she loving? Is she humble? Is she generous? Right? Same thing for the guy. You, but put them down on paper. Right? Don't just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really think about it. Do you see it in action or not? If you don't see it in action, quit living in the clouds, people. It's, uh, it's not there. Think about the virtues, prudence, fortitude, justice, temperance, generosity, kindness. Maybe we should do a book study on the virtues. We could delve into a great book on virtues because, guys, this is at the heart of not only relationships, but also the spiritual life. Okay, so that's kind of tip two. Look for character, not charm. Tip three is don't settle. Guys, this is huge. A lot of people get into relationships. They invest a lot of time and energy into them. Then maybe two, three years down the road, they realize, wow, this isn't what I thought. This is not really the one I want to marry. But I've already invested so much time, so much energy. <gasps> I'm just going to settle for it. I'm just going to go through with it because, oh, well, it'll work out anyway. Well, guys, don't settle. Don't settle. The sad thing about settling, uh, if you're a man or woman of faith, is it represents a lack of faith. 
because ultimately people settle because they're afraid. They're afraid of, uh, you know, I've already invested so much, I have to let go of that. They're afraid of trusting that God is going to provide. They're afraid of, you know, just the unknown. That if I go through this breakup and if I try to find someone who's more in keeping with who I'd love to marry, that God will um, bring him or her there. Now, I know a lot of people who are faithful Catholics. It's tough because it's like, well, <laughs> where are these guys? Where are these women who are interested in living according to the faith? It can be discouraging. But guys, they're out there. They're out there. You focus on uniting yourself to the Lord. And in that process, God is going to bring the people he wants into your life. We don't know the time. We don't know the way. But he's He's going to. I've seen it happen. And it's awesome. Um, but it's also important uh, if you do have someone you're considering marrying. To really think about the deeper issues. It can be easy to kind of date and just kind of live on the surface. But you have to have conversations about difficult topics like like work. Who's going to work? How's that going to happen? Are we going to have kids? How many kids? Are we really open to God's plan for life and having as many children as he blesses us with? What about in-laws and finances? You, you, I mean, you have to have these, these sorts of conversations, you know, uh, uh, about what's really important. Some of you might be in a relationship with someone who's of a different faith. Okay, do you really understand what that's going to mean for you? The church allows you to marry someone who's not of the same faith. So, but they actually have you write it. There has to be a dispensation for that. Not because it's like not possible, but because they just want the Catholic person to know, like, are you, are you aware of what you're doing now? Because there's going to be a lot of resp responsibility that's going to be put on your shoulders only, really, at the end of the day, like raising your children Catholic. And you just have to think about that. You need to think about that before you enter into that commitment. Um, so uh, anyway, we could talk more about that. Some people like go down this road of missionary marriage. You know, oh, I'm going to convert him. He's going to change. He's going to convert once we get married. Don't bank on it. Usually it's actually the other way around. The Catholic person becomes less Catholic after marrying someone who's um, uh, of a different faith or just not practicing anything. So just intentionality. You got to think about things and be realistic. Uh, the last tip is embrace the weight. So sometimes we just get really anxious because we're single and we wish we weren't and we're just, it's, it's tough to wait for the right man or right woman to come into our lives. Well, don't just see it as like this time of waiting. Well, it's a time of preparation once again. And the Lord it could be using this time, asking you to wait, to allow you to grow, to grow closer to him, deeper prayer, deeper faithfulness to the church, right? Helping you grow in virtue. Helping you to really consider who who is the type of man or woman you'd, you'd love to spend the rest of your life with. So it's not wasted time. Not at all. It's uh, a great blessing if we allow it to be. So at the end of the day, guys, you're single. You think marriage is your vocation. Trust in the Lord. Unite yourself to him and he will guide you. God bless you and have a great week. See you next week with chapter 14. We remain united in prayer.